Rub up your engines! Can you buy a used Lexus? Is it gonna cost you a fortune to fix? Well, this is a 2009 ES350. The guy bought it a few months ago. He hasn't put a dime in it yet. We'll go through our tips on what to look for, what not to look for. Can you save a whole bunch of money buying a used Lexus? Now, this car was originally about $35,000. He paid a little less than $14,000. You're saving $21,000. Not a bad idea as long as the car's in good shape. Now, first you wanna look at it cosmetically. If you look closely in the sun, it's a good way to check it. You can see that the white is slightly mismatched because it was in a front rack, which he had found out. The giveaway here is, look at the shiny headlight. Look at the dull headlight. This is the original one. This is a replacement. But the fact that it still got the original right hand side, that shows the wreck wasn't that bad. It would have been mainly on that side. So probably wasn't that big of a wreck. And since it doesn't smell, the paint was painted a long time ago. And as the owner said, it was in a wreck, but they must have fixed it right. Cause it runs perfectly fine now. Of course it's got these horrible beauty covers. I hate these things. You gotta take everything apart to look at it. Check anything out. It really makes you kind of a pain in the butt. But at least the top one comes off easy. 2009 which is one of the best years because as you can see it's all metal here this isn't one that you got to worry about messing around with a stupid rubber timing belt it has a timing chain changes the oil every five six thousand miles three four five hundred thousand miles or more much better than a rubber timing belt you find one with a rubber timing belt pay a lot less because there's a lot more maintenance involved let's listen to the engine <laughs> Smooth, quiet engine. Look at that. No shakes. Put in gear. Definitely no shaking there either. Smooth as can be. Dash is in good shape. No cracks. The leather seats are still excellent. We'll look inside. Well, there's a lot of stuff in here, which just shows you. There's a lot of room. It just keeps going back and back. These guys are moving to St. Louis, and they got a lot of stuff in it. And of course, the back seat, it's got stuff in it too, but there's a lot of room. And you can see, they put great leather in these cars. Things... 12 years old, they're still in excellent shape. And the mahogany wood, that's real wood veneer. It's still in excellent shape. This baby was made in Japan. And with only 105,000 miles, can go a long, long way. He paid less than one third of the original price. I would say this vehicle probably has 80% of its life or more left. If you can pay one third of the price for 80% of the life, you can't beat that. So let's take it for a spin. This can be when you start it up. It's new enough. It's got a backup camera on it. Now close the back windows. There was a dog in there. He's not here now, so. First thing you notice, quiet luxury. Still has the original struts on it. Rides perfectly fine. These are smooth riding vehicles. Still corners like a dream. These things are like flying carpets. Now you're gonna hear the odd noise in this cause it's full of stuff. Things are rattling around cause they're moving to St. Louis, but the car itself, it's just like riding a flying carpet. Now realize these are normally aspirated V6 engines. No turbos, no GDI injection. They are made to last and ride smooth. That's what these things are for. They don't have all the technology that the modern ones do. So odds are they're gonna last a lot longer than the newer ones will. Just driving this thing around, really. It feels like a new car. You can't even feel it shifting gears, it's so smooth. Now, they're not race cars, but they get going once they start moving. We'll do a start from test, there we go. Well, it almost spun the tires, but the traction control stopped it. And motor sounds strong, shifts like a dream, pans off the wheel track straight down the road. This car's in excellent shape. Now, the guy had to buy this as is, no guarantee. You don't need a guarantee on one that's this well made. As we cruise down the road, listen. There's no wheel bearings roaring. Everything is smooth. Well, hit the brakes, see how they work. Stopped straight as a dime. The ABS works great, but it doesn't make it stop slow. It still stops really fast and controlled. And if you can do a test like this, do it like I do. In the road, when you look behind in the rear view mirror, you don't see anybody behind you, then it's perfectly safe to slam your brakes on. Just don't go willy-nilly. This road is great, because there's hardly anyone on it. So when I road test cars, hey, I can slam the brakes on. I can take off. I always make sure there's nobody coming, nobody going, and it's a good test. And it's a good test for the twisties, too. This thing is like a flying magic carpet still. Doesn't matter that it's 12 years old. These Lexus is made in Japan. They are quality vehicles. The air conditioning is still freezing cold. Plenty of power when you want to pass people. Now I admit it, I'm a cheapskate. There's no way I'd pay $36,000 for one and the new ones are even more. $14,000 for one that runs like this? It doesn't sound like that bad of a deal to me. This kind of luxury and quality, all right, you find a car like this, 
snap it up. And like this model heck, it's only front wheel drive. It's not all wheel drive. You don't really need all wheel drive. This thing handles great. And if you're in a snow area, just put snow tires on the front. It'll get you around almost as good as an all wheel drive vehicle if you put snow tires on the front tires. These things are well designed. They got a good weight balance. Since you got the engine and tranny in the front and the front drives, you put snow tire on the front, they'll get tons of grip to pull you around. Sometimes people get a little carried away with it. So I got to have all wheel drive. A lot of cases, you really don't need all wheel drive. It costs more. It gets worse gas mileage. It's going to cost a lot more money to repair because it's expensive to repair all wheel drive systems. You really don't need it, especially in a luxury car. You're not going off road mudding with this thing. I'm sure the Lexus L is worn. The chrome came off of the plastic. You can always buy a new chrome piece and glue a new one on. The advantage of older cars, there's a big aftermarket for them. You go on eBay, Amazon, find all kinds of stuff, save all kinds kinds of money like the headlight it's got one new one from the wreck and one old one you can buy just one new one for the other side for the passenger side and you can get them i bought real quality ones for like 230 dollars a piece you can get even cheaper ones but don't i tried that and they faded away so i went back to 240 dollar ones for my wife's lexus i don't like them fading away the cheaper ones don't last as long pay a little bit more and you get a higher quality because that plastic if it's cheap and it fades it looks horrible you can get decent ones for 230 240 for this Lexus. No, as a tip when I'm driving back, they ride like this, buy them. But if you see the transmissions herky jerky, you hear bearing noises, don't buy them. Rebuilding transmissions and engines on these things cost a fortune when they finally wear out. But with 105,000 miles on this thing, no way it'd be worn out unless the previous owners never changed the oil or something like that. It's rare, but still, if they do shift bad, make weird engine noises, don't buy them. So let's get the old machine out and analyze it. Seems perfectly fine, but the computer doesn't lie. This is my new machine, trying it out so far, it's working pretty good. We'll go to diagnosis and Lexus. Here we go. Knows what it is. Lexus CS 350. We'll do an overall report. Everything's coming up green. Up oh, air conditioner. Okay, we got a few wacko codes here. Let's check them out. A lot of greens, as you can see. But let's look at the reds. The air conditioner has a problem with a solar sensor on passenger and driver's side. Air conditioner's working perfectly fine. These things have too much technology in measuring of the temperature on each side. Forget it. If it works okay, you ignore that crap. A lot of technology, sometimes you ignore the little things. Power window master communication stop. Can lost communication. Blah, blah, lost communication to the main computer. Same thing, doors are working, windows are working. You get a bunch of codes when these things get old. They mean nothing like this. Look at more. The headlight swivel motor, this has adaptive headlights. That has codes, lost communication. Most of that's nonsense. Care about is everything else. The engine, cruise control, that, that's all working, that's all green. So what we wanna do, we'll go to the air conditioner, we'll turn the car off, then we'll turn the ignition on with the car not running. So you see the idiot lights are there. Now the idiot lights are on. So what we'll do is we'll clear the faults there. That's cleared. We'll go back to the next one, the main body. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna clear that. Clear fault memory. Then we'll go back again. The last one's all this headlight swivel crap. We'll enter that. Clear all of those. As you can see, read fault code. They're all gone. Who knows? This thing had been in a wreck. A lot of times, guys, don't clear that stuff. This isn't something that a normal scan tool, a cheap generic one will clear. When it says clear trouble codes, yes, yes. These are specific trouble codes, weird stuff for communications. Only a fancy tool like this can erase those codes. Just because it had those codes doesn't mean anything. It could have been because it was wrecked and the wires got disconnected. All those systems work. See? All the windows go down and they all go back up automatically too. Cause like that, you just really don't care. Now, if we had a code that the engine wasn't right, the transmission had a problem, that's a big deal. These codes, you're gonna find it on any modern high-tech car like this as they age. Sometimes something as dumb as a loose battery terminal causes them. Or like I say, this one was in a wreck. Maybe it was never reset at all. I see that all the time. So, the car's excellent, doesn't matter those little codes, this car's gonna run for years to come. So can you buy a used Lexus and not have problems? You can't if you did like he did and he got it at a Lexus dealer. Originally it was a lease. Another guy had it, tried it in and he bought it. It's an excellent shape. They don't need that much maintenance with this low mileage. As long as you change the oil, they're pretty much good to go. This one checks out fine. Forget the minor codes. You can get a really nice luxurious car that can last for decades at a fraction of the price of the new one. You spend a little time looking for one and look at the right range of vehicle like a Lexus made in Japan. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.